Hamvention 2024, and guess what? Flex Radio is debuting something new. I think it's a thousand watt VHF HT or something. Like that. <laughs> but it, no, it's not actually. So, all right, Mike, tell us what we're in store for today. Right. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I'm going to have to speak quiet. And we've right. And we're recording Thursday at right. I'll be honest, 11, and, and you're going to guys are going to see this live. So Flex is coming out with a. Uh, new HF radios, the Flex 8400, which most of you probably figured out already thanks to our back-end store system that had all these cool features we learned about the hard way. <laughs> and, and there's going to be an 8600 as well. So let's just talk about what's the same. Okay. A lot of things, everything stays the same. So we don't lose any features. So the 6000, so all the 6000 series stuff will, will interface with the 8000 series? Yep. Okay. I'm going to give them the slide deck. We're going to overlay the slide deck. Mm -hmm. You can see the M model looks the same and the cabinet stays the same. And a lot of the reasons we do this is to save money. I mean, we've already got the SKUs designed. We already have the cases designed. Sure. It's cheaper to make it. If we make it cheaper, we sell it for less. Cheaper is a bad word. If we make it less expensive, we get to sell it for less. True, expensive. true. All right, so the 8400 uh, and the 8400M replace the 6400 and the 6400M. Okay. It has one spectral capture unit, which means you can hook up one antenna to it, although it has an AB antenna switch, you can use A or B, and you can see the entire spectrum from 30 kilohertz to 54 meg at the same time. What that really means is you have two slices or two receivers, and you can be anywhere from 30 kilohertz to 54 megahertz, you just have to use the same antenna. And if you run a multi-band antenna, no big deal. Like, a, like an all-band vertical, like an HF6V, mm -hmm. hex beams, mm -hmm. they work beautifully on, on a single spectral capture mm -hmm. unit radio. Mm -hmm. uh, two receiver slices, we said. Amazing RMDR numbers, if you go look at Rob Sherwood's sheet. Third order band pre-selectors, this really helps with cross-band interference. And by the way, the 8400 or the 6400, are both amazing field day radios. You can you can that's okay. you can put you can put them all at tables and, and we have people run these for field days and zero uh -huh. band interference, thanks to the uh, yeah. and pass filters yes. built yes. in. Well, and we were talking about this last night. How Kyle was saying that there are actually hardware filters in the 6600, and I swear up and down that the filtering because I can set my 6400. I don't have a 6600 as you know. I can set my 6400 up at home and have it on my off-center fed dipole, and I can change it to my 7700, or any other, this is not a dog in the 77, any other radio, my, my Yezu, yeah. my 7300, whatever, and the filtering, and the waterfall filtering on the Flex is so it, much cleaner. And it doesn't move. It, it doesn't move, yeah. no, no. And you can, and you're, you're seeing waterfall signals, you tune down to that signal, you don't hear anything above or below the signal, but you tune to the signal and it's clear as a bell. And I'm like, this has got to have some sort of filtering already. And Kyle's like, no, I don't have any filter. I'm like, in the software, it's got to. No, there's filtering. There's hardware filtering both the 400 series and the 600 series. Okay, well that's what I thought too. But okay, all right. So and Kyle is wrong. And the it, well, and it's not. It's not hard. There's probably more filters in the 6600. And the filters in the 400 series are the same as we're in the Flex 6500 and the Flex 6700, okay. third order. Okay. Kyle's got a 6700. Yes. If you had a 6300, which most of us people bought because it was a really good entry level radio. Mm -hmm. Uh, it didn't have any filters, but I didn't care. It was just me. Right. Okay. okay. Gotcha. And okay. the okay. and the tuner stays optional. The the three to one tuner, which is designed to extend the band range of an already resonant antenna. Okay. You know, gets you up to three to one. Probably more will get you three to one all yes. the time. Yes. I'm gonna put my ham hat on for a minute, Jason. Resonant antennas just work so much better. Yes, they do. Okay. They just really receive better. They're quieter and they actually radiate more energy. Mm -hmm. you know, SWR only tells you what the radio wants to see. Mm -hmm. That's my ham rant, I'm, yeah. I'm not an NFED halfway right. fan, but as you know that. Okay. Uh, you can still do full band duplex, which means you can, you can be, uh, take, open up a second slice, put it in FDX full duplex, put an antenna on your receive port and listen mm -hmm. to yourself, or don't put an antenna on. So you can actually want to tune your audio, you want to hear how you sound, and many of us in the olden days would spin up a second radio, put headphones on, go, hello, hello. Yes. Well, you don't need two radios. You can do it with one. Right. Uh, transverter port, if you want to get into weak signal work, 100-watt uh, radio, minus 60 dBC, dB carrier harmonic suppression, which makes everybody happy, and we're going to get better at that. Mm -hmm. And what's that last line say? Integrated adaptive pre-distortion. Can you say it a little quieter? <laughs> yeah. Integrated adaptive pre-distortion. We didn't let the cat out of the bag yet. <laughs> so this is the difference then? This is the difference. Okay, all right. This is one of a couple that okay. are really cool. Okay, all right, good. Uh, we still have Multiflex. Uh, remote is uh, by far, and I'm saying again as a ham, the easiest to set up from Icom, Kenwood, Yesu, 
Yeah, oh yes, by far, by right. far, by far. Integrated GNSS satellite reception. Okay. Okay, so you don't okay. have to go buy a GPSDO. It uses right. four, and I wish I had a slide in here. Steve has okay. a good slide of, of the four systems we use. Um, mm -hmm. GLONASS, GPS, uh, and I forgot the other two. Mm -hmm. Not the Chinese system. Right, okay. right. So that gives you up to um, what is it, 12 channels of one times 10 to the minus ninth. What does that really mean? That gets at, at, at worst case scenario, 54 meg. Mm -hmm. I will be off frequency by half a hertz. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And, okay. and it's got a little antenna goes on the back. In most cases, this will work in house. You won't have to run an outside antenna. It's oh, nice. It's like your iPhone's pretty good, yes. right? Same yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we'll. Um, I'm going to go test some, you know, Amazon type antennas that you can mm -hmm. extend it type of thing. And if you really want to add the GPSDO because you really get into the 10 gigahertz or you really need that for sup, that okay. um, work, uh, you still will be able to add a GPSDO and you can use that as a 10 meg reference mm -hmm. signal. Um, as well, though, rewind a bit, there is a 10 meg input okay. uh, on the radio, just like the previous one. So if you've got your own 10 meg time base, you're welcome to use it. Okay. okay. And you're only as accurate as that time base. Same story, we now go to two spectral capture units, two receivers, four receiver slices, uh, 115 dB of two kilohertz RMDR, uh, same 30 kilohertz, yeah, 54 meg, of dynamic of range of 155. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, same tuner, uh, three to one. Uh, full duplex operation. Now we can get this uh, into satellite uh, work where you've got uh, VHF, UHF, here, the, uh, uh, and that works. Okay. I do that all the time. I've got like 2,000 contacts uh, on, on mine, even using dollars. SAT PC32. Mm -hmm. Do you have a? Do you have two transverters? Yes. Okay, so you have one for VHF, one for UHF connected, mm -hmm. and, it, and it works full duplex. Yeah, and I think if, if you're really getting up into that work too, you could buy the Q5 signals okay. five band okay. one. Okay. I mean, it's a little pricey, yeah. about two yes. grand, but that's you know 25 watts. Gives you two meter, 220, 440, 906, and 1296. Great for those VHF contest guys. Absolutely. Yeah. And then if you want to do satellite, just go buy a VHF one. Or if you really feel like you really want to be inexpensive and you're okay doing the integration, you could go to an RTL dongle or an yeah. SDR play mm -hmm. and integrate it on a PC. It's a lot, lot more work, but it will work. Yes. Minus 60 dB harmonic suppression, same thing. Okay. Uh, Multi flex support, the GPSDO. Uh, the GNSS receiver, nothing changes there. External 10 meg reference input. The 6600 for you contest guys is plug and play SO2R, full integration yeah. and one mm You don't have to buy a second radio. It just works the way it's designed mm -hmm. with both spectral capture units. Yes. And uh, all, and if you get, if you want to build the whole ecosystem. Uh, I have it. I today would I would make it work because it just works so well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have a Flex 6600. Uh, I have a Tuner Genius, which is just a really for me. It's a glorified watt meter because I have resonant antennas. Yeah. And I have my Power Genius. And now I don't care if I'm on A or B. I, and then the Antenna Genius, the two by eight antenna switch. Yes. It's such a beautiful integrated solution. And we're here at date and we could talk to you about that. So let's have a look at the back of the radio. This is a, a picture of the back of an 8600, but I want to show you what's not on the 8400 and the 8600. Right. The top left or top right we've got where the GNS antenna goes. There's a cutout for the ML9600. Of course, we don't use that. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, uh, for the one or rather there's a one pulse per second jack that's not used in the amateur world. Uh, the 10 megahertz reference and in and outs are at the bottom. And then, of course, because we have two spectral capture units, we've added the uh, transverter 2 and the receiver, you know, uh, our XVT, XVTR2 mm -hmm. and RXB inputs. Okay. Gotcha. So there's, so there's four transverter ports on the back of the 8600. No, there's only, uh, on right. the 8600, there's two receiver ports. Okay. And two transverter ports. Okay. Okay. So let's okay. talk about adaptive pre-distortion. There's two types of adaptive pre-distortion. Adaptive and static, mm -hmm. and the static is something you you sort of uh, and I haven't seen exactly how the workflow is, but you hit it has to do its math and then it applies the mm -hmm. fix and uh, it's faster. It's ultimately faster, and you get eight to fifteen dB benefit of much cleaner signal. If you see the, a clean signal on a waterfall, it's perfectly like a column. There's no splatter, mm -hmm. you know. And you, mm -hmm. let's put it this way: the bad ones stand out like a storm. Yes, cut. yes. Um, and a lot of amplifiers make it really bad. In the adaptive, it goes on every time. Uh, the radio must support full duplex, which most of ours do, and we see up to 25 dB improvement. So you'll, we're all going to learn more about adaptive 
and static adaptive pre-distortion. Okay. The bit more of this, it's uh, we currently actually have adaptive working in software. Uh, works at 100 watts or any amplifier. Mm -hmm. uh, the Power Genius XL has a minus 60 dB tap on the back. Mm -hmm. You have to sample the RF. Uh, other amplifiers have that tap uh, as well. Or there are kits where you stick the sampler after the amplifier. They're yeah. not really complicated stuff. Yeah. Now, what about the older 6,000 radios? We're still working on that. And can we do it in cost effective? To be honest, right now, we're not sure if there's enough horsepower okay. in that radio to run it. This okay. has always been a bit of a nervous thing. Yeah. I'm pretty honest about this. Uh, subject to change, a lot of stuff has to happen. Like, we have to sit down and really prototype it. Okay. We did have it working. Okay. But did it, you know, was it good enough? Yeah. You know, yeah. was it fast enough? Mm -hmm. Can we optimize it more? There's a thousand questions. And if you ever worked on product development, you understand exactly where yes. we're coming from. Yes. Uh, yeah. On this slide, adaptive pre-distortion, uh, there's a standalone. We've got just how we operate daily. And with the Tuner Genius, uh, oh, in standalone mode, it's all internal at 100 watts. So you don't have to worry about anything. Right. With the Power Genius, there's a sampler cable that comes back. Okay. And then with a third-party amplifier, you have a, some sort of sampler built in, as gotcha. I said. Hmm. We have the ability called FT8, or digital wideband. The ability to transmit and receive over 40 kilohertz of bandwidth. And before you jump out of your chair, this doesn't mean we're gonna transmit a 40 kilohertz wide signal. Okay. <laughs> but it does. We'd, mean... we'd have to call ourselves CB operators if yeah, we did that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is really something in the, the expedition world where um, they can say, hey, we're listening up 40. Mm -hmm. Now I can imagine there's gonna be uproar about this on 20 meters and the RTTY guys and the packet guys are gonna go upset. Mm -hmm. so don't worry about it, it's just concept. Mm -hmm. But at least now in a de-expedition, you could have the operators or maybe something, it could be a big POTA station. Yeah. You know, I'm listening six wide or 10 wide. Ah, okay. Okay. And they'll, and they'll call back in that, maybe in that bandwidth, but they'll still retain the three kilohertz. Oh, okay. Okay. So they may transmit up 12. Yeah. Four streams. Yeah. But they'll keep them all within three kilohertz. Gotcha. Type of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not sure where this is going to go. We think good things are going to happen from okay. love it or hate it for digital operators. Yep. 80% of us are still hounding away at digital and making contacts we never made before. So we have no, you know, we need to support it. We need yes. to enhance it. And that's yes. where it's going. And, you know, hey, I got the Aurora last week. I made 100 contacts mm -hmm. on sideband. I had a blast. Nice. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And uh, there's a couple of slides here showing that we're seeing it a huge increase in the amount of spectrum we can cover yep. as a receive. Now, whether this come as an audio stream or IQ stream, I don't know. Okay. We're working with the, the WSJT, JTTX, MSATV authors or whatever engines underneath, or maybe some new mode. Uh, we've got some work coming up in advanced noise reduction, and I'm going to guess at this because I haven't asked the question. This may be now because we have a lot more horsepower. These machines are faster. We've got a built-in NTP server. Oh, good. So, okay, so no more need for... No more need no for, more need your, for your, like your Pi a, running your GPS. Yeah, or, yeah, uh, yeah, an external GPS dongle or a, a, a time sync application running in the background of Windows or something like yeah, that. Yeah, if you're doing POTA or yeah. it's mm -hmm. all built in, yeah. uh, so that's Good. coming. Okay. Uh, some new features with uh, the integration of the TGXL finally into mm -hmm. Smart SDR okay. uh, and some analog meters. So here's a slide showing the uh, Power Genius, Tuner Genius integration. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it looks like you'd expect it to work. So in the bottom bar, you'll have, you know, the amp and the tune. Yes. And then you could dig in in the maestro. Here's what it will probably look like when you'll see uh, what you're tuning. Do you care if it was C1, C2, and L are yeah. at? Yeah. But they're there. The analog meters, yes, I know they were announced a year ago and we still presented them. <laughs> so, yeah, you can yell at us about it. But uh -huh. they're actually really hard to do well. You can build an analog meter. Sure. But to make it, they're called actually ballistics. Accurate. Yeah. It work. Yeah correctly so a lot of work on that okay. coming and uh, I'll tell you though it looks really good on the this is a maestro screen yes. you know how you do that offset on the maestro yes. you come in a bit with all your meters I think that's really that does look good yeah I do, I do like that uh, right. that's where we're at that's so. where we're at okay so what a uh, time frame the software is going to be this year okay uh, hardware t as of today uh, August I think the ship hopefully we're trying okay. to soon Okay. Uh, if you have questions, you have, if you have any models on order already, a 6000 series, we're, we know you're out there. We will be in touch. <laughs> Don't get excited. Yeah. We will call you. Uh, and, and everybody's already started hearing the rumors and calling. And we've yeah. just been, you know, I had a guy place the order the other day and I, and I had really had to say, get your order, get it in place. 
trust me, it'll work. It's not going to cost you anything to, to get your place in line. Right. So if you're interested, yeah. get an order in line. Okay. We are going to be taking uh, small deposits okay. uh, starting Friday. Starting at, at Hamvention. At Hamvention. Okay. Okay. And then on online store. Um, Hopefully it's working in time, but you know, hand mentions a priority, but we'll have it working yes. by Monday, Tuesday. Yes. So, yes. Okay. so just okay. a bit of patience would be great. Okay. Fun thing. What do you think? All right. I think, I think it's great. I think the satellite guys are going to love it. I think the guys that care about clean signal are going to love the clean signal initiative. They've been whining about it. Yep. it forever. Yep. yep. I think the more horsepower is really. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anytime you need, anytime you're going to do a true SDR, it's going to be, it's going to be subject to what's available in horsepower today. So five, six, seven years from now, you're always going to have faster GPUs, CPUs, um, more memory, and that kind of thing. So I, I, no, I think this is a step in the right direction. The 6000 series has been great. I've, heard, I've had very little problems with my 6400 as far as it being slow. Um, so I'm interested to see how much faster this may or may not be. I've been thinking for a long time that I want to upgrade to a 6600, so maybe the 8600 is the way I'll go. Thank you for your time, man. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yep. Yeah, have no a problem. good show. Invention 2024. 7-3, guys.